In this video, we'll be taking a look at the home studio gear that I recommend for you to use in your home studio in 2023. If you are in the market for gear, you can check out my gear guide. You can just go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. And I've made it super simple for you here. I've got my mobile set up, everything I use with my iPad, with my iPhone for a mobile studio. And the desktop setup, the desktop setup I'm using right here, right now to do this particular video and live stream, that is there as well. So just go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. They are affiliate links, meaning if you make a purchase, they do break off a little chunk and send it my way. So full disclosure on that one. The first thing I say whenever we start talking about gear is... Start creating now with the gear you have. Don't wait. You don't have to save up all your money and buy the latest and greatest gear. Use what you have right now. And if that's your iPhone or your iPad or an Android device and you can just record something, go for it. And you really don't have to spend a fortune. I will give you some recommendations for what is going to be a budget yet a quality home studio in 2023. So none of the cheap and nasty gear but I'm certainly not going to recommend you go out there and spend $1,000 on your first audio interface or your first set of speakers. So without further ado, let's dive straight on in here. So there is the gear guide. What we're going to look at is what I think are the 10 most essential pieces of kit for your home studio and give you some ideas and suggestions for the ones that I use, why I use them, and maybe even some alternatives. But if you've got your own ideas, what I'd love you to do is jump down into the comments and let me know, what are you using? What bargains have you found? Have you found a piece of kit that really works well for you? I would love to hear from you. Let's dive in here and talk about the first piece of kit. This is the audio interface I've been using for about three years now. I've used Steinberg interfaces for a long time. And if you're new to recording, an audio interface is simply a way to take your analog signals, your microphone, your guitar, your keyboard, your synthesizer, and turn it into a digital signal that your computer, your iPad, or your iPhone can understand. So if you want to record a microphone in good quality, you need yourself an audio interface. And like I say, this is the one I've been using for a very long time. It's under $200, which isn't the cheapest. It also isn't the most expensive. It's got two inputs there for two microphones or a stereo input or a couple of guitars. You've got options galore there. It's got 24-bit audio, which is important, 192 kilohertz, which is less important, but a good option here. And the reason I like this one over some others is on the back here. You can power this up using two different sources. You can either power it directly via USB or you can power it via a separate USB power supply or even a USB battery. It makes it great for portable recording. You've got MIDI in and out and you've got high quality outputs there for monitor speakers, which we'll talk about in a little jiffy. Now, the thing about audio interfaces, and you'll notice this if you go back to the gear guide, is I recommend quite a few different ones. In fact, if you scroll down here to audio interfaces, you'll see that I, there's a lot of Steinberg ones. There's the focus right there's the irig series there's a bunch you can go with and here's the thing audio interfaces all you need to really look for is that they are 24-bit audio and that they have a decent quality preamp and decent quality converters so basically anything that you get from personas anything from steinberg anything from focus right anything from m audio these companies are all making really good interfaces these days so the good news is you really can't go too wrong if you're spending around a hundred dollars or more on an audio interface as long as you're not going the absolute cheap and nasty you're going to get yourself good quality audio recordings into your device now when you're recording you also need to be able to hear, regardless of what you're recording, even if you're not using microphones or you're not using guitars, you need to be able to hear. And that's where you need a good set of monitor headphones. These are the monitor headphones that I recommend. They are the Sennheiser HD280 Pro. They're a closed back headphone, which means that they're great for recording. They're not going to have a lot of bleed. And bleed is where you've got your headphones on and the audio is coming out of the headphones going into your microphone and you're getting that bleed, you're getting that background noise. You want to avoid that. That's what you can do with a pair of closed back headphones. Also good for mixing and monitoring. And because they are reference monitors, it means that, you know, you're not going to get that hyped up bass that you'll get from like Beats by Dre or something like that. You're going to get a very flat frequency response. And once you start recording and once you start mixing using a pair of headphones and you get to know that pair of headphones, 
then you'll be able to know how to make your mixes sound the best. So if you're just sitting there and you're like, hey, I'm not even going to get a microphone yet or a guitar or a MIDI keyboard. I just need a good quality interface and a pair of headphones. Again, you can go with something like the Sennheiser and the Steinberg and you'll be good to go for around about $280. And remember, you could even go a cheaper. You could go like a $100 interface and spend less than $200 and get yourself kitted out with your home studio. Next bit of kit is of course the microphone. I'm talking into one right now. It's an important piece of kit to have in your home studio. And I recommend this one. It is still on sale. It was on ridiculous sale earlier in 2022 for about $59. It usually sells for $99. $79 is a great bargain. So if you're watching this one here in December, I would jump on this because it's still a great deal. Everyone I recommend this microphone to loves it. Look, it's not top of the line, but again, you're paying less than $100 and you're getting a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's going to pick up a great amount of quality audio and you're just going to have a really good time with this. Whether you're doing vocals, whether you're recording your acoustic guitar, even electric guitar amplifier or a cabinet, or I've, I've even had folks that are doing like flutes and clarinets and they're using this and they say the quality that it picks up is really darn good. So... That is uh, the first option I would give you there for a microphone. And again, there's a heap of other microphone recommendations over here on The Gear Guide. So you recommend you jump on over to studiolifetoday.com slash gear. Righty dokey. So you've got yourself an audio interface, a pair of headphones and a microphone. What's next? Well, for me, the next thing that I think is super duper handy is a keyboard controller, a MIDI keyboard controller. So something that you can plug in via USB and you can actually play in your parts. So even if you don't know how to play keyboards, even if you're a hunt and peck typer or something like that, you're still going to get some benefit from this to be able to play in some of those melodies or even just hold down a note for those like long chords or those pads that you want behind your music. So this one here, I've been recommending it for ages. It is middle of the road. I'm not going to lie to you on this one. It's not a $300 or $400 keyboard. It's $119, but it's got touch sensitive keys. It's got the, the wheel down there for your velocity. And it's also got your uh, ability to change octave there. You've got volume control and it, it just does the job really, really well. It's a simple, uh, easy to use keyboard. And the cool thing is if you're starting out and you're like, I don't play keys. I don't know if I actually need something quite that snazzy. If you search the M Audio Key Station series, there's uh, bigger ones, there's 61 key and 88 key versions of this one, or there's what I like to recommend for folks starting out, this little tacker here, a 32 key mini USB keyboard, especially if you're not a keyboard player or you don't play piano, for $59 you can get something that you can actually just plug in and then start playing around with if you want to play with synthesizers and keys and virtual instruments, it's a lot of fun and it's the next thing I'd recommend for your home studio. The next, next thing. So these are your four things. You've got audio interface, you've got microphone, you've got headphones, you've got a MIDI keyboard. Of course, it's speakers. Now, speakers can break the bank. You can buy very expensive monitor speakers from places like from Yamaha, from KRK. These little things have kind of changed my world and have changed the world of a lot of home studio creators. They're the Presonus Era series. These are the ones that I have because I've got a small room here. They're little 3.4 inch bookshelf uh, near field monitors. And again, these aren't going to blow your mind with massive bass and amazing, like amazing sound pumping out of them. But what they are going to do is they're going to give you a balanced level level sound that's going to be able to help you mix your music if you're in on a budget and if you're in a small studio. Now the good thing about these ones is that they come in a bunch of different versions. These are the ones I use again and you can see there they've got qualities, they've got the features on here that punch above their weight. So the reason I like these is you've got acoustic tuning in there so you can tweak your high and your low end based on the room that you've got there. You've got the ability to use RCA unbalanced and TRS balanced as well. So if you're going out, say you're using a high quality interface like this Steinberg, you can get the balanced output from the back of this sucker and send it straight on in to the Persona speakers and you're gonna get the best quality audio for your buck. So that's a pretty cool thing. The other thing you can do here is if you search Eris, uh, there's the fives and there's the sixes and there's the sevens. So you can go up in size. If you've got a bigger room and you want something that's gonna pack a little more punch, check this one out. You can go for the, uh, the 199. If you want to have something that's got a little bit more guts to it, you can use these ones. And they've got, again, even more features on the back here, even more bang for your buck. But they are uh, amazing little speakers. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be impressed with the quality of sound you get. If you've used monitor speakers before, you'll be blown away by how good these are for the cost. And if you've never used a pair of reference monitors, 
it's going to change your world. So there's, there's your number five thing that I would recommend when you're setting up a home studio. So that's sort of the halfway mark. From here, it's more about some options and some variations and some cool things that I use when you want to kind of go to the next level. But if you're starting out, grab those five things. And again, for your under $500, you can get yourself set up with an amazing little home studio for yourself. Microphones, I talked about the condenser microphone. This is a dynamic microphone that I use. I like using a handheld microphone and the difference between a condenser and a dynamic is a condenser picks up a lot of sound. I've talked about this on the channel a lot around microphones. A condenser microphone, uh, because it's got a large diaphragm condenser and it uses phantom power, it picks up everything including your background noise, including mouth sounds and clicks and pops sometimes. So if you want something that's going to be a little more of a, uh, give you a little more buffer, if you've got a less than perfectly treated room, a dynamic mic's a great option. And this one, even though it's a little more expensive, uh, it sits anywhere between about $90 and $115. At the moment, it's $115. But this is what I use for live applications, for recording loud vocals, for recording things like loud guitar amps. This is a great option. So if you want a microphone alternative, the AKG D5 is what I would lean towards. Next up, what you're hearing me through right now is this. This is the Zoom Live Track L8. And uh, I've been in love with this mixer since I first saw it released. Uh, the L12 and the L20 were these mixers before, and they were in the range of $600, $700, $1,000. I couldn't justify it. I didn't need that many inputs. But as soon as Zoom put this one out, the Zoom Live Track L8, as you can see there on the 6th of December 2019, just before certain things happened, I bought this mixer and I've been super duper happy with it. You can see there you've got six separate inputs. So right now I've got my microphone that you're hearing me through in input one. My guitar lives in input two, so I've always got a guitar that I can just plug and go with. And my iPad and iPhone, they go in here through this stereo pair here in five and six, and it leaves me three and four for plugging in random different things. The good thing about this is you can also use USB audio, so I can actually play back audio through my Mac or my PC, and it will go directly through this channel five here here. You've got an effects channel, you've got a master channel. It just is, if you're doing any live applications, you're recording a live band, you're doing live streaming like I'm doing right now, you're podcasting with multiple people, this is amazing. Uh, too many features to mention here. Go through and take a look. It is at the best price it's ever been at $349 at the moment. You can record, use it as a standalone recorder. You can use it battery operated. You can record to an SD card. It kind of just has everything that you need. Uh, so 12 inputs, four outputs. Uh, this is the, the coolest thing. So you can also do a really good mix minus because you can have up to four separate mixes. So you can say if you're recording a band or if you've got someone that needs a louder mix, someone needs a quieter mix, you can jump in there and you can change all of those separately and independently. So the Zoom Live Track L8, if you are doing live applications, is a great mixer if you want that next level up from having something like an audio interface. However, that could be overkill for you. And a little gadget, this is the new stuff for 2022 that I picked up that I'm going to be using a lot in 2023 is the iRig Stream Pro. At the moment, over here on Sweetwater, it is only $149, down from $199. And what this is, so this is a device that allows you to plug in your stuff and then stream using your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, your PC. I use this with my MacBook at the moment because what I can do is, see how it's got these RCA inputs? I can take my amplifier, which I use a roll and cube amp. So when I'm playing outside of the studio, I grab my amplifier, it has a line out, it goes into the line in of this. This comes with USB, USB-C and lightning plugs, so you can plug it into any device and then it will send that sound into that device. So if you don't want to go the whole hog and go with something like a mixer, a little thing like this in your kit bag is amazing and it's just really easy because you can just load it up, you can dial in your sound and then you can be streaming high quality audio with a little battery operated device just like this, the iRig Stream Pro. And as you can see, if you're not using a line input, you've also got the ability to plug your mic or your guitar directly in there as well. So it makes it a handy little companion for when you're out and about and on the go. Again, highly recommend you check out the iRig stuff. As you can probably see behind me, I am. Uh, I'm a fan of iRig. <laughs> I have a lot of IK Multimedia gear uh, that I use here in the home and mobile studio. Uh, next up, this one's a bit of a left field one, but webcams. Now, 
I don't go the whole hog, which is using something like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera for things like live streaming, but I wanted the best quality webcam. And previously, I used the Logitech 922, which is a fabulous webcam, and I'll show you that one in a moment. But if you want the easiest but best quality, this is what I go with. The Logitech Brio, it's a 4K webcam, so it's high resolution. It does a really good job, even in low light. I've got some decent lighting here, but even in low light, this thing does a really good job. The Logitech software it comes with is really good for configuring and getting your best quality video. And even if you're just recording yourself or you're recording songwriting ideas or you want to do everything up to a music video, I use this webcam for pretty much everything you see on this channel and it gets really good results. If you're not looking to spend quite as much money, if you go in here and you search for the Logitech C920 or C922, they are the other options that you have and they're a lot more affordable uh, options as you can see there. The C22 is now just $66. That's an amazing price. It's a 1080p webcam, so not quite the resolution you get with the Brio, but again, a really good deal at the moment. And the reason I mention that is that audio and video are more connected than they ever have been before. In the past, you didn't really have to worry about video, did you? But these days, if you're a home studio creator, folks want to see a little bit of that behind the scenes stuff. And you'll be surprised how quickly you want to be able to actually film something and have the option to have high quality video. So Logitech Brio webcam is the go. What I am typing and clicking on right now is another piece of kit that you might not think about for the home studio, but for the love of your deity of choice, buy yourself a decent mouse and keyboard. Now, you don't need the bells and whistles gaming mice and keyboard for home studio work, but something like this, the Logitech 850 series, is amazing. Uh, the mouse is only right-handed. You can get variations of this for left-handed or for, for universal, but if you're a righty like me, uh, this is a fabulous mouse and keyboard. You can see there, you can connect it up to three different devices. So my mouse and keyboard are connected to my Mac. They're connected to my iPad and to my iPhone, would you believe? I could, you can connect to all three of those and you just at the touch of a button, it changes between those three devices. So it's super, super duper handy. And just the quality you get with something like this. If you've ever used those keyboards where the keys stick together, they don't have the right travel distance, you don't have any of those sort of problems with something like this. Really comfortable wrist rest there. And the mouse, same deal. You can connect it to three different things. It's got a really nice scroll wheel, a heap of options. So I know it sounds weird. I know it might sound a little bit dull, but when you're putting together a home studio, it's often the last thing you think about, but it's the thing you're touching the most. I would argue that I touch my keyboard and mouse 10 times more than I touch my MIDI keyboard, my guitar, my microphone, because it's always there. So do yourself a favor. If you're spending $1,000 kidding out a studio, spend $100 and treat yourself to a decent keyboard and mouse. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. Uh, a couple of bonus things. That, that's it. That, that's the stuff I wanted to go through here. But I'm just going to go through a couple of pieces of kit, some, some quality of life stuff here right at the end. And that is the connections between your gear, especially if you're a mobile creator. But even if you're just in a desktop studio, you'll need a bit of stuff like this. The first thing I want to show you is this, the Atola powered USB hub. I live and swear by powered USB hubs. This one, $29.99, is the hub that I use right now. Everything's plugged in through this hub into my Mac Mini that I'm using right now. The good thing about this is you've got three USB 2 ports, you've got four USB 3 ports, and a smart charging port as well, meaning you can charge up your mobile devices or other things there. Cool thing about this is you use one port on your Mac or your PC or your device that you're using, and then you can plug in as many devices as you like. And this, as you can see there, it's got a power brick. This charges or keeps charged or keeps powered your devices separately. So you don't need to worry if you've got enough power, if you're going to have problems. If you ever had that thing where it's like <clears throat> um, the, not enough power to run this accessory, this accessory uses too much power, you don't get that when you've got a powered USB hub. So again, my recommendation is grab yourself a decent quality for the sake of 30 bucks. You can get these for 20 or even 10, but I'd get something a bit decent like the Atola here. It is going to save you a lot of headaches in the future. If you're using a USB-C device like an iPad Pro, something like this is a must have. So this is just a little dongle here. You can see you've got USB-C there. You've got power pass through, which means you can charge up your 
your device at the same time, whether it's a USB-C laptop or whether it's a, a iPad Pro, and you've got a multiple USB 3 ports as well. So this is kind of a smaller, more portable version, but if you're on the go with something like an iPad Pro or even a MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, this is a great option for you. You plug this one in, you get power pass through, so you can power up your device and you can plug in additional USB gear at the same time. Finally, last thing of all here, if you're using an iPhone, grab yourself one of these. So say it with me, folks, and a lightning to USB 3 adapter, because this means that if you've got an iPhone that uses lightning or even an older iPad, you can plug in USB devices. And again, if you've got multiple USB devices, you can pair this up with a USB hub. So you can grab this, and then you can also grab yourself the powered USB hub, and you can connect up up to seven different things to your iPhone. And it's going to charge them all up separately as well. You will need power, but again, there's an option there. Or if again, if you want to be on the go, you can get something like the, the portable device there. So there's just a couple of little quality of life things there at the end, some ideas for you. And again, all this stuff is over at the gear guide. So if you head on over right now to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, yeah, the link is down in the description, it's right down there, you'll get this page. All you need to do is come through here. If you're just going shopping, click on the links up the top here. If you want to check out all the mobile gear in my setup that we talked about here, it's all there. If you want to look at all the desktop gear, it is all there. And then there's the master list and segmented categories with everything that I use. And once again, all of this stuff, this isn't just stuff that I think looks good. This is stuff that I've used that people that I know and trust have used in their home and mobile studios. And it works and works well. I hope you found this one useful. If you've got your own suggestions, ideas, comments about anything else related to the home studio and setting up your studio in 2023, drop that down in the comments and I'll see you next time.